right, back here for the start of the fourth quarter. It's third and nine on the 21-yard line for Urbana. Crunch time now for the Hawks, down by 10 as we start the fourth quarter. 12 minutes left. Pennell, back to pass, fires, and he's got it complete. No, incomplete. Again to Patrick Coffey. Coffey thought he had the ball complete. But uh, the side judge over there rules it incomplete. And now it is fourth and nine. And we have a flag on the play. I didn't, I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see, see a penalty. It, I didn't see it until just now when I saw the referees huddle it up. It came here on the near side official right at the line of scrimmage. It, and it looks like Urbana is going to walk back. Mm -hmm. This might be a holding penalty. It's the only thing I can think of on that pass play. Uh, we'll see what happens. Walkersville defense encouraging their crowd to get into it. Well, why we take a second for the judges to figure it out? We saw there what we saw earlier from Walkersville. You have to have, as a receiver, you have to find the end zone. You have to find the lines, especially when you're down like this. You need to make sure you're staying in bounds. Your team needs that catch. You can't make that mental mistake. So now let's see what the penalty is. And they may just decline it here, and it looks like it is going to be declined, so it will just be fourth down, and if you're Walkersville, that's what you want. You don't want to give Urbana another chance to try and get a first down and try and get back in this game. Especially knowing that they can go 82 yards on a run. So now Coffey will be back to punt at his own 10-yard line. A couple of Lions standing back at the 50, and this one is nearly blocked, and now Coffey got hammered on the play. That is number 15, Kobe, Cody Tharp, and Coffey is slow to get up. Tharp ran right into Coffey, and that's going to be a personal foul on Tharp and a first down for Urbana. Just if you're Walkers, well, just what you didn't need to do. And we certainly hope that Coffey is okay. It's one of the more dangerous plays in football. The punter's got his whole leg exposed and then has his guys diving for it. But uh, as the training staff attends to him, it will be first and 10 for Urbana. The offense gets new life. Absolutely, and we mentioned this earlier. As Coffee should say, I'm sorry, Coffee gets up to his feet and is jogging off the field under Absolutely, his own Absolutely, that's good Continue. to see. No, we had talked earlier about Walkersville committed a lot of penalties in the first quarter and the first half. They're letting Urbana hang around. Now, it's only they're only down 10 points, but they should be up by infinitely more. You keep beating yourselves, roughing the kicker passes, holding calls. And they would have gotten the, the, the ball in pretty terrific field mm -hmm. position. They would have got it at about the Urbana 40. I didn't happen to see where the ball rolled out. It was in that general area. By my count, that is now six Walkersville penalties. Three of the five-yard variety, two of the 10-yard variety, and one of the 15. When you have the chance to slam the door, you need to do it. Now, fresh set of downs for Urbana. Pennell will go under center and has three running backs behind him. One wide receiver here on the near side. Takes the snap, back to pass. Looking to the far side, has a man and overthrows him. He had Brandon Plant open at about the 40 yard line, which would have been enough for about a four or five yard gain but um, Plannell overthrew him. I actually think with the speed that we've seen Plant exhibit this evening, if he had turned up field, I think he had enough room for the first down. So again, we're seeing, we're seeing some of the growing pains of a sophomore quarterback and not trying to rip on Pennell at all. It's, it's, a, it's a fact of life. It's, but uh, you can see he has, he has what it takes to see it, to be a quarterback. You see he's got Absolutely. a good core there to build around. He certainly has the skill set, but you can tell going up against a senior-laden team in Walkersville, just not quite all there yet. Second and 10 now, and we got a flag. All kinds of confusion before this snap. Not sure what's going on here. It looks like Urbana's, either he's counting or he's signaling. I can't tell, but it looks like maybe 12 man on the field. That's what I was thinking too, because you had a guy that was going to the huddle and then came back, but I'm not sure. Now they might pick this up, let's see. No, they are gonna pick this up. So after all of that. <laughs> let's try this again. So it'll still be second and 10. So uh, that's, a, uh, that's, that's a good job by the officials there to get together and get the call right. 
Absolutely. I guess this is still anybody's game here. Mm -hmm. Walkersville only up 17-7. Still 11:45 left to play in the ball game, and as we've seen, anything can change here in a matter of about 10 seconds. Now Pennell under center. Pitches it out to the far side to Ambush, and he gets spun around and then hit in the backfield and will get dropped way back at about, let's see where they mark it. They marked him at about the 30, and he's fortunate they didn't mark him back closer to the 25 because Ambush actually did turn around to try and come the other way. It's a loss of six for Ambush. And now puts Urbana in a huge hole offensively at third and 16 from the 30. I'm surprised to see that move from a senior. Ambush should know how far back he is. Instead of sacrifice, instead of taking that extra five yards, just take the down. You're not going to be going forward on that anymore. Now, big play here, third and 16 from the 30. Pinnell under center with a wide receiver here on the near side. He will roll out to the near side here, trying to pass. Has a man open and complete! And it's gonna be enough for a first down. There's the talent we were talking about, Dorian. That is complete to Nathan Miller, the senior wide receiver, going from the 30 all the way out. Let's see where they mark this. Out to the... 46-yard line, a 24-yard pass to Nathan Miller. And as we get later and later into this ball game, got to come back and think, and maybe this is the play that gets Urbana going again. Absolutely, and if you're the Walkersville defense, that was a third and 16, and you gave up a, over a 20-yard pass. That's a problem. So now Pinnell back under center. Again, has Miller on the far side. Pinnell backing the pass again, fires again, and it is caught this time. Again, by number eight, Freddie Romero. It's enough to move the chains. That goes from the 46 down to the 33, so a 13-yard game to number eight, Romero. Romero's first catch of the game. And now the Hawks are on the move. And you've kind of felt this whole game that Urbana was one or two passes away from just putting it all together. They're just not quite clicking. And now you can see they're moving the ball down the field, finding the open holes. Well, no time like the present. 10.30 left to play. Walkersville up by 10. First and 10 for Urbana. And a handoff up the middle. A gain of two down to the 30. That was number 42, Michael Dunn, I believe, on the carry. A gain of... Uh, Three, so it'll be second and seven. Don't go anywhere. Ten minutes to play in this one. Still anybody's ball game. It's been a great, great game thus far. And these next ten minutes look like they're going to be just as exciting as the previous three quarters. Absolutely. Second and eight from the 31. Pinnell under center. Two wide receivers to the far side. Fakes the handoff, looking left, looking left, and overthrows Brandon Plant. <clears throat> Plant was open in the flat, but uh, Pinnell overthrew him, and now it's going to be third and eight. And after two, com two straight completions, you get that overthrow. You need a little bit more consistency. Again, it's the sophomore. A little bit more consistency, you know, you got to hit that receiver, especially in crunch time like this. So now, third and eight from the 31 yard line. Obviously, this is going to be four down territory for Urbana. Pinnell under center has a wide receiver here on the near side, fakes the handoff now, rolls to his left, escapes pressure, tries to set his feet, throws, and it is caught by 42, Michael Dunn, just shy of a first down. They're about two yards shy, so it is a six-yard gain. Let's see where they mark this at. This is gonna be at the 24, so it will be a seven-yard completion on third down to Michael Dunn. So now fourth and two, and they get the first down, a rush right up the middle. First down, Hawks, they're on the move again. I actually think that if Urbana comes back to win that game, that third down completion by Adam Dunn is going to come back and be huge. He did a great job tracking that ball in. It was over his, his back shoulder. He had to turn around to catch it. That's gonna, that could be huge. So now first and 10. Knocking on the door of the red zone. First and 10 on the 20-yard line. 
Pennell with a little bit of confusion. Nine minutes to play. He goes under center. Ambushes out wide to the near side. Fakes the handoff. Looking to pass. Has a man. Fires. And looks like there was some miscommunication there. Pennell threw towards the end zone. And Ambush cut the route off right at about the goal line of, in the middle of the field. But that's okay. I don't mind the incompletion there. Because it gets everybody a chance to, to reset. And try and calm themselves a, a little bit. 8.51 to play. And when I say everyone gets a chance to calm down, I'm talking to broadcasters too. <laughs> Have you seen this press box? Everybody is up, standing up against the window. It's pure excitement here tonight. Now, second and 10 from the 19. Pennell under center again. Hands the ball off and caught from behind and spun down. That is number 22, Brandon Plant. So let's see. It's a gain of maybe one on the play. So it'll be third and nine from the 19. Big couple of plays here. You got to figure if Urbana doesn't get into the end zone on this drive, that their chances of coming back into this game are really going to to decrease. Absolutely. I was going to just ask you, you think it's fourth and where we are? Oh, absolutely. Fourth down absolutely. Fourth absolutely. Down territory. Third and nine. Pennell under center has a, a wide receiver on the far side. Fakes the pitch out. Now back to pass. Looking, looking. Has a man. And it is incomplete. I never even saw what happened to that football. He had ambush standing wide open at the goal line. And I think it maybe got batted down at the it line did. of scrimmage. It did. He had uh, he had ambush wide open. It was a great job by the Walker's field uh, defense to get up and knock it down. And there's the little things that come into play in a game like this. Mm -hmm. there's a if it's a touchdown there, there's only 8.05 left. That gets Urbana right back in within one score. Now, fourth and nine from the 19. What happens here? They've had success. They haven't had as much success running the ball as they had in the first half. I still like the, the fake and then the pass play. Ambush split wide to the far side. Pennell under center. Fakes the handoff. Go where to go and gets sacked in the backfield. Walkersville holds. It is a 10-yard loss on the sack. And Pennell really had nowhere to go. And now the Walkers fan, Walkersville fans going crazy. Student section for Urbana quite dismayed. Eight minutes to play. Walkersville up by 10, and they have the football. I think dismayed is an understatement. I'm pretty sure I just saw a beheaded Stephen Lyon <laughs> being thrown around the student section out there. So now Walkersville will take over. Vicious, vicious student section. I know. <laughs> Glad I didn't go here. No, not at all. 30-yard line, first and 10. Here's the handoff to Ezel, and he is going to get stopped in the backfield. But they're going to give him forward progress for a gain of maybe one. So now if, you're, if there's ever a need for a three and out, it's now, if you're the Urbana defense, they've come up huge all, all second half long. They need to come up with the big stop again. That is Ezel's 26th rush. Somebody get him a bag of ice. Absolutely. And, you know, Walkersville has forced Urbana into three turnovers. Urbana hasn't forced one from Walkersville yet. If there's ever going to be a time, now would be it. Palaselli hands the ball off on a sweep here to the near side, and that's going to gain maybe two. Again, that is Ezel. Love to see his spikes after these first couple games here and all these rushing yards he's gotten. That's got to be, he's got to be going through a pair of shoes a game, I mean, like Michael Jordan used to do, always wear a new pair of shoes for each game. As we take under seven minutes to play, it is third and seven from the 33-yard line. Big play here. As we said, 6.45 left. If Urbana is going to get back into this game, it's got to start here. Absolutely. You have to have a stop right here. In the shotgun, Palaselli back to pass, and we have a flag on the play. Let's see what the call is going to be. And it is dead ball false start on Walkersville. And we just talked about those penalties just a minute ago. That is Walkersville's seventh penalty of the game. 
That's been keeping the Hawks in it. Like you mentioned that Urbana hasn't forced a turnover yet. The penalties have really done the job there. You saw in the, the couple drives in the first quarter and in the in the goal line stand, there were a couple penalties that called him back and it, it hurt them. Exactly. So we'll, now we'll see if Urbana can follow through on their end. It's now third and 12 from the 28. Palaselli back to pass, sprinting to the left. Back to pass, throws, and it is well overthrown. The Urbana defense has held. I don't see any flags on the field. And with 6.28 to play in the ball game, Walkersville is going to have to punt. If you look at it, though, this isn't the worst thing that could have happened to Walkersville. Urbana has had some trouble moving the ball this half. Pin them deep, play defense. So now, Palaselli will stand back at his own 15-yard line. A couple of Hawks standing at about their own 40, ready to receive the punt. It is away. Not a great punt. It hits it about, it goes out of bounds, I should say. Let's see where they mark it. There is a flag on the play. Let's see. And... I didn't. Did Let's see, they're marking it. I, there's a flag on the field. I don't know. Let's see, they are marking the punt, and it is going to go out of bounds. going to be marked at the Walkersville 46 yard line. So, not a great punt from Palaselli. I'm not sure what the penalty is. It looked like it came from the side judge. It did. And I actually I completely missed the flag because I was watching the punt. It really looked like number four, Baker, got in there and either tipped it or distracted Palaselli just enough. And I almost wonder, and I see the side judge doing a throwing motion to the side if, as if one of the players was thrown down on the sideline and you would at least in my mind I would think that this penalty would go against Urbana it has in my in my mind I don't know we haven't seen anything cons uh, confirming anything from the referees they are talking to the Walkersville it has gotten increasingly chippy. I don't know if you've noticed as the, name, the game has gone on, there's just been a little bit of extracurricular shoving and pushing. And the signal is holding against Urbana. So let's see if they consider that after the, the punt. And I believe they are, because it looks like maybe, no, they're gonna re-kick. They are going to re-kick it, appears. And it's gonna, gonna make it fourth and two or so, fourth and two, fourth and three for Walkersville, so. Do you still kick or do you go for it? I think in this situation, you probably still kick if you're Walkersville because you're up by 10 and you don't want to invite any trouble, but it does give you some pause, that's for sure. So now fourth and three from the 37, Walkersville still in punt formation. So a loss of 10 yards for Urbana on the play, and a loss of what could be some really good field position. We'll see. Palaselli gets the snap. It is bobbled, and it is another bad kick from Palaselli, and it will roll out of bounds at about the 40, 37 yard line or so. We'll see where they mark it. They're going to mark it at the 37. So not all that. Well, it, it was a loss of about 10, 15 yards on the play, but still Palaselli with a real chance to bury the Urbana offense, and he couldn't do it. So now with 6.13 left to play, Urbana still has life. They need one of those 82-yard runs right about now and a real quick drive. 17-7, Walkersville. College football game day is online and on demand tomorrow with sfmsports.net. At 1240 p.m., the Stevenson University Mustangs host Lebanon Valley. Listen live on SFM Sports Channel 2. Then at 530, the Delaware State Hornets return home to Dover to host the Florida A&M Rattlers. Listen live on SFM Sports Channel 1. First and 10 for Palaselli. Two wide receivers here on the near side. Looking to pass, under pressure, just gets the ball away, and it's it dropped! Wow, almost intercepted by Ryan Robertson. He had it and dropped it, had it, and then dropped it, and Palaselli gets away with one there. I think Pinnell is just breathing a sigh of relief because that would have sealed the door on Urbana's chances. Or all, I, should, I shouldn't say it would, but it would almost have. Yes, uh, almost. And now it's second and 10. We want to finish up that college football note for you from here at sfmsports.net. Uh, college football game day, we want to remind you, live online and at mobile. Stream on your computer or smartphone thanks to the Maryland Army National Guard on sfmsports.net. Delaware State and Stevenson in action tomorrow. Second and 10, Pinnell under center. 
Two wide receivers here to the near side. And he will do a quarterback sneak, and it's fairly successful there. He gets about four yards on the play. A nice run there as we take under six minutes to play. So the time is now if you're the Urbano Hawks. Absolutely. There's still, still enough time that you're not having to go to the hurry-up offense, but you're getting close. Well, they tried the hurry-up offense earlier in the game, and it, it didn't didn't really work out for them there in the third quarter. Uh, they, they, they went back to the regular huddle here. We'll see if they pick it up again. Third and six from the 43. Pinnell under center. Back to pass, rolling to the left here on the near side. Looking, 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 sets his feet, throws, and that one is intercepted! Pinnell tried to fit that one between two defenders, and that is going to be picked off by number 32, David Petrell. And that probably is just going to do it, or just about do it. Still have 522 left. And Walkersville still only up by 10, but Pennell tried to squeeze that one in between two defenders, and he couldn't do it. And I know we've, I feel like we have just harped on this all game, but this is where the sophomore comes in. You know, a, a junior, a senior, someone with a little bit more game experience, you take the yardage, you run out of bounds. And try, he already threw it down to double coverage before. Thank you for mentioning that. I should have mentioned, too, Pennell did your right head. Seven, eight yards, looked like he had room to run. But now... Palaselli will take over in prime condition to win this game. He will hand the ball off up the middle. Stop for no gain. Let's see if that was Ezel or not. That was, it was maybe a gain of one. So now it'll be second and nine. Walkersville bringing the play. An update from Fenway in the top of the six. The Orioles have taken a 4-2 lead against the Red Sox. But back to matters here. 4-40 and counting left to play. Palaselli under center. Will hand the ball off again. No, he will keep it this time, and he will squirt forward for a gain of about four on the play. <clears throat> so that is his 18th rush of the game. So third and five. And if Urbana is going to do it, it's going to have to be now. And I see for Urbana, number eight, Freddie Romero throwing some footballs on the sideline. Now Palaselli will hand the ball off again to Ezel. No, he will keep it. And Palaselli will get down for another three-yard gain. So it is now fourth down with 3.50 to play. There still is hope for Urbana. They just have to have to get it now. It is going to be fourth and about three or so for Walkersville. Let's see if they, they will likely, I think, he'll take the clock all the way down and then call a timeout. And it looks like that's what they're going to do, waiting for the back judge to raise his arm in the air regarding the play clock. 3.20 and counting. And now they're going to call a timeout with 3.18 left. We'll, quick, we'll take a quick timeout as well. With 3.18 left to play, Walkersville in control, 17-7. Fans, again, we wanted to take this moment to remind you college football game day is on live on sfmsports.net all day tomorrow. Beginning at 12.40 on Channel 2, Stevenson will take the field against Lebanon Valley, and Delaware State will return home after their game in Cincinnati last week to play the Florida A&M Rattlers on five, at 5.30 on Channel 1. Walkersville back to punt, and it will in, they will indeed punt the ball away, and it will hit it about the 7 and roll out of bounds at about the 3. So if you're, if you're Walkersville there, a huge break for the Lions. As the Lions look to seal this game, let's see who Urbana brings in at quarterback. The Walkersville defense has come on to the field 3-12. Left to play, the Lions up 17 to seven. <laughs> now.
now. First and 10 for Urbana. They're gonna go five wide. And they are gonna have the new quarterback. We'll tell you about him in a second. And if his first pass goes incomplete, the quarterback is going to be number 11, Andre Henry, listed as a junior quarterback. He's gonna try and get Urbana down the field in 308. They're down by 10. Standing in his own end zone, second and 10 from the two. Back to pass, swing pass, caught at about the one yard line by Ambush, gets out across the five and ooh, nearly es escapes out of a tackle and would have had some more yards, but Ambush gets it complete. And it's gonna be third and about five. Third and four, we'll call it from the eight yard line. And now the Hawks will go in a hurry up mode. Still five wide receivers. Henry in the shotgun, looking right. Now steps up in the pocket, tries to evade some pressure, and it is tipped and intercepted once again by Walkersville. Henry was getting hit, tried to flip his wrist to try and complete it, and it was tipped twice at the line, and Walkersville came up with it. It's just been their night. It's just been the Walkersville Lions' night in the turnover battle. And now Walkersville will take over two and a half left to play at the Urbana 15 yard line. And that will all but do it. So we saw that one really good drive from the Urbana offense. And they haven't gotten back to the end zone since. And now Policelli will hand it off to Ezel, and he gets from the 15 all the way down to about the seven, so another eight yards for Ezel. That is 20, his 29th carry of the ball game. 99 yards and a touchdown in the first half. We have him hovering right around 130 yards for the game. Second and short, eye formation for Palaselli. Gets the snap, another handoff to Ezel, and he will get down to the five. So it's a gain of three, and I believe it's gonna be enough for a first down, we'll see. But it should be enough for first and goal, they're gonna measure. As they're gonna bring the chains out, the ball is just shy. No, they're not gonna bring the chains out. They're gonna call it third and short from the five. They have to get across the five yard line. They are just shy of it. 94 seconds to play in the game. Palaselli under center. Hands it off again to Isel. Has the first down all the way down to the three yard line. So a gain of three, it's a first down, and that should just about do it. So first and goal for Walkersville, and you gotta think here with a minute and 24 seconds left, that they may might just take a knee and go home happy. So stay tuned after this game, Dorian and I will take a brief break and come back with some post-game analysis. They are gonna go in victory formation. Walkersville with 110 and counting. Palaselli will take the snap. And take a knee. Nothing quite like the Greg Schiano, Tom Coughlin situation going on right now. The Urbana defensive line did uh, get a little bit of a push through, but nothing uh, quite as serious as what the Buccaneers did. I think one more kneel down should do it. We're 42 seconds and counting. Palaselli and the Lions will come to the line one more time as the Walkersville student section looked like they're about ready to storm the field. Palaselli. They'll take one more kneel down with 23 seconds left. And that should do it. That will wrap up a 17 to seven win here for the visiting Lions from Walkersville High School. 
as the time officially ticks away. Walkersville 17, Urbana 7. The teams will head out and shake hands. And now here comes the Walkersville student section. Walkersville improves to 4 and 0. And so for my partner, Dorian Kraft, and our executive producer back in the studio, Steve Clendenin. I am Paul Taylor signing off from Urbana High School. Once again, our final score, Walkersville 17, Urbana 7. This has been the Maryland State High School Football Game of the Week on sfmsports.net.